if evolution is just random mutations and selection how can something as complex as an eye evolve if you really think about it carefully you might reach the conclusion that evolution is bullshit and that this was designed by somebody intelligently let us explain today how it can actually evolve think about it right it I, should i, I don't know it, how right? it makes sense that you know from monkeys we got man that kind of makes sense it's a gradual improvement but what is it like from half an eye you got 3/4 of an eye and from 3/4 of an eye that doesn't really make sense right first that's a very very disturbing image exactly and second how that's the problem as in if you understand the theory of evolution yeah what has to happen is that there have to be a bunch of intermediate steps correct and each intermediate step should make sense for that organism it should be giving some evolutionary advantage otherwise it will disappear wait right? let's take this all the way back yeah it became an eye yeah but what was it in the beginning that's what i'm asking you it seems difficult right i can't actually think about it yes huh? in fact ha huh. um there is a famous argument huh. from the 1800s huh. by william pelly right this is in the days when people were wondering did god create the world or did it just happen randomly and his argument is called the watchmaker analogy right okay. let's say you're walking around hmm. okay on a new planet hmm. and you see rocks hmm. and you see water hmm. and things like that you say yeah fine this can happen through randomness and physics correct and then suddenly you stumble upon a watch ha yeah. and you open it up and you see the intricate mechanisms and you see how they all connect into each other and you see how at the end it ultimately results in one thing going once per second another going once per minute another going once per hour yeah. and so on right yeah. you look at it and you say this can't be random there has to be a watchmaker somewhere who's very intelligent who's very talented and who made this yeah because the gears have to be fitting correct. correctly correct. interlocking and, and all of so, that and so william pelly thought that this is like a slam dunk argument in favor of saying that god created this world this is called the intelligent design argument okay and okay even today ha. there are lots of uh, people hmm. who believe that evolution the theory of evolution is bullshit it is not really true yeah, and creationism God... and intelligent design is the answer uh, instead correct but when you take the example of the eye suddenly intelligent design gets a lot more credence i don't exactly. believe it yeah this whole argument hmm. has come from a book called the blind watchmaker by richard dawkins okay okay totally worth reading very interesting book which takes you step by step through the process of how Evolution All of Richard Dawkins actually, books are definitely worth reading and I suggest you go yeah. and check them out so, Blind Watchmaker definitely right um so let's try to understand step by step hmm. if you start with something like an amoeba hmm. how do you end up with eyes good okay. point because amoebas as we all know don't have eyes single right. celled organisms and suddenly one fine day it is not going to get a eye through random mutation right so yeah. what are the intermediate steps yeah because amoeba is like a shapeless single celled organism right. which so now let's imagine hmm. that there are a whole bunch of these blobs hmm. which are organism the bigger ones eat the smaller ones correct okay correct. so the smaller ones want to try to run away from the bigger ones but right now none of them have eyes yes. or any other real senses other than the skin correct these are multi celled organism so you can call it a skin like the yeah. outer layer or outer uh, covering okay right? so how do they run away from predators they when they bump into a predator then they try to run away as fast as they can correct they are blind okay. now one fine day you know that evolution hmm. works through random mutations in the genes okay okay one fine day one random mutation creates one little patch on the skin of this organism hmm. which is sensitive to light oh okay okay now there is this one organism or a small bunch of them hmm. which have one patch hmm. which is sensitive to light can you imagine this giving them evolutionary advantages yeah because if that a uh, light sensitive patch detects changes in light it means that there is something nearby which is causing that change in light which means they have to possibly run away because it could be a predator basically a predator blocks light casts a shadow on you yeah. and if this organism learns that whenever there is 
a change in sensation on this patch mm. that means from light it has become dark you should run away in the opposite direction to survive so to survive greater chances of them surviving correct now this is like a minor improvement okay hmm. like improves your chances of surviving by maybe 0.1% okay. okay but imagine that there are millions of these organisms and there is this one which has a 0.1 chance of survival more more than the others more than the others you do this one generation later there are two of them two generations later there are f- like maybe three of them and so on exponential after, increase and after a certain point in time everybody has that correct patch because you know at the, some point half of them are this with the patch and the other half of without the patch and the ones with the patch keep surviving more than the ones without the patch correct right so after like you know thousands of generation maybe hundreds of thousands of generations mm. uh, even a tiny improvement mm. in survivability can as long as it is also hereditary as in you can pass on the same gene to uh, your offspring it will spread throughout correct it right? will propagate so now correct. you can imagine that most of these organisms have a patch correct right mm. so now a patch of light sensitive skin has evolved correct okay, okay. Mm-hmm. now the next one is that through completely random mutation again mm. what happens is that one of the organisms gets that patch of skin which is like shallow okay. a little like depression a cup shape. like a so- no saucer okay saucer shape mm. right now what happens mm. as a result of this okay this particular organism mm. now can't just tell that this side is dark but even a little further away right because it is acting like a concave lens, lens. concave lens it can tell that this direction oh so now it's there not is just light or dark it's also light or dark from which direction exactly oh. right so earlier the one with just random patch if a shadow is coming from this side versus shadow from this side doesn't know it's right? just a shadow run away it run to the somewhere somewhere yeah. right now this one knows more precisely how to run away so it can run away and not Correct. just run. run exactly okay so now again this is you can imagine giving a 1% higher chance of surviving and like we explained before over multiple generation multiple probably thousands of generations this becomes the norm now everybody has a saucer shaped depressed patch of light okay now you can imagine the next mutation what happens is that the saucer shaped patch becomes deeper yeah. right because the deeper it is the more clear is your sense of direction of light mm. right at some point it becomes deep enough that it becomes a cup shape mm. right so now this cup shape is giving you exact precise direction so in fact it the predator doesn't even have to be near you just from far away you know there is a predator mm. and you don't uh, you don't even have to run away you can just walk away yeah when it becomes basically a cup shape uh, i i'm beginning to think of the pinhole camera from my days mm. in physics but yeah. i have a, i have a different question yeah why does the concave shape progressively become a cup shape and not turn into like a convex shape like why doesn't any other mutation occur well all the time other mutations are occurring okay right but two things right 90% of the mutations that occur like this mm. are just so bad that the organism isn't even born oh it, the survivability yes right? i mean first of all forget survivability i mean you have a mutation hmm. which doesn't even allow you to reach birth stage ah, right you achha. just die okay most i mean if Sad, i take a but, program hmm. and i randomly flip some bits in the program it won't run correct but one in a million time flipping that random bit can change the behavior of the program ooh mario right something like that so 90% of the time the organism just dies yeah now some percent of the remaining time you have an organism which is born and which lives hmm. but that mutation makes your survivability worse okay right? so like, like the convex instead of the concave correct right or in your case if you are born with a limp right you live but makes life harder makes life harder right yeah in a tiny tiny fraction of and oh lots of the mutations hmm. make no difference to you right like you have a patch on your skin or you have a sixth thumb yeah, like or, exactly exactly it makes no difference to your survivability it's neutral okay 
in a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the cases, you get a mutation which actually improves your survivability. Oh. The, so mutations are happening all the time. The most mutation... of them, the, that's the magic of evolution. The 99.999% of mutations which hmm. are useless or neutral, they will die out. They will die out. But that one, one, one rare mutation which improves things stays around and it slowly takes over the entire population. Okay, this helps because so far what, what we've been conditioned to understand is evolution is anthropomorphized. Like hmm. this mutation happens and therefore it changes your quality of life. Therefore this propagates, but no, it's not that. Yeah. There are different mutations happening all the time. Correct. The mutations that are helpful and conducive to survival, survivability of us as a species yes. will stay and the other mutations will die off. Exactly. Okay. Right. Now we have a cup shaped eye. Uh, no, not eye. Not eye. Sorry. Cup shaped patch of skin which detects light, light and directions right? of the light. Now next mutation is that the opening of the cup narrows. Pinhole camera. That's how you get a pinhole camera. So now instead of just seeing direction of light, what happens is that on the back side where we have the light sensitive skin it can actually tell it gets a Basically, bit of image a, is formed image is formed of that side so it can tell that there is a dark patch here a light patch here another yeah. dark patch here so in fact it can tell what is going on there right? right so this significantly improves survivability in fact you can use it not just to run away from predators you can use it to go find prey yeah right because you now you can tell now. you can tell the size yeah because a bigger predator is going to form a big patch, a smaller thing is going to form a small patch and you say big, run away, small, <laughs> go eat. Correct? <laughs> so run towards and run now away. you have a cup so shape. You have the beginning of an eye here. Correct. Yeah. Now, next mutation is that there is a layer, form layer of skin on the covering. Eyelid. Okay. First, actually what you get mm. is like a layer. Many, many times you would have had a layer mm. which is opaque. So, which makes the entire eye useless. Like you can imagine a baby being born with closed eyes. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. And those die out. Sorry. But once, sometime there is a mutation. So heartless he can be sometimes. Right? But yeah. You get a patch, a covering here, which is transparent. Oh, the lens. No, no it's not a lens yet. It's just a covering. The, uh, what is it called? The covering. iris. Kind of. Yeah, well, transparent, I, yeah, yeah, covering. Yeah, transparent covering. Okay. Right? So, Cornea. Cornea, okay. yeah. that's A transparent covering. What is the advantage of a transparent covering? Uh, it prevents dust from going exactly. in. Exactly. You have this cup shaped thing, a small opening and some dust goes inside or gets stuck here. Go on, your eye is useless now. Correct. Because right. everything looks like a blob. Everything yes. looks like a patch. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, yeah. That... So now this covering hmm. is protecting your eye. Hmm. So this is going to. And then you get another covering to protect the covering that is protecting your eye and then optic nerves now, involved. No, and... no, no, no. Wait, simple. The covering. I'm so excited to get to the final <laughs> <Yes>. eye, man. <laughs> the covering, next uh, mutation is that the covering thickness changes. Therefore the lens. And. Various, it goes to various different possibilities of uh, thicknesses. Some of them are useful, some of them are not useful, but over time you get a lens, yeah. which forms a much more precise uh, image. image on the light sensitive skin. By the way, that is the retina. Yes. Now we have a retina, we have a cornea, now we have an eye lens. Uh, very soon we are going to get an eyelid, right? You two can things, now see. Two yeah. things that stand out to me is one, it took like many thousands of generations to go from one single light sensitive patch mm. on what mm. the what we call the skin yeah. and for it to become like the rudimentary eye not even like a proper eye yeah. we are not even talking optic nerves we are not even talking the brain and we are not even talking about seeing it yes and that is how it actually worked right uh, the earth is four and a half billion years old mm. i think life probably occurred three and a half billion years ago for the first two billion years, they were all unicellular animals or something like that. Hmm. So for many billion years, the progress was very slow. Correct. Okay. In fact, most of these things came in the last few hundred million years, well, yeah. billion-ish years, yeah. right? And humans are there only for a hundred thousand years, one lakh years. Okay. Yeah. So problem is that humans just can't Imagine, fathom the 
amount of time involved and the number of generations that have gone through. Yeah. This is why we think of it as well. If I was doing it, how long will it take me? Right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's not how it works. And that is why we find it difficult to imagine that a random process with selection of the fittest can result in something so complex. And that's the other thing I was talking about when I said two things. The other thing is this evolution was uh, a result of one thing and one thing only. Hunger, papi, pet ka sawal hai. Of course. <laughs> Everything is about food. Yes. Either not becoming food or going to look for food. Well, so. actually it was about sex, but the food is needed for that. So, yeah. Okay then, <laughs> we'll get to that also. Very yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah. But uh, that also explains why a watch cannot evolve on that planet. Well, yeah, I mean, none of us have watches in built, right? We so, do have like an internal watch built uh, in our brains, but not so exactly the... simplified yeah, version. Yeah, not the gears and whatnot. Correct. But remind me again, why should I care about this at all? Like, why am I discussing so, evolution of the human eye with you? Yes, so understanding evolution yeah. is a superpower. Okay. okay, that helps explain so much of the world around us. Okay. okay. Whenever you see behavior that seems stupid or pointless, if you ask why and why and why again, you will see that there is a reason there based on evolution. Ah. Another important thing is that evolution applies not just to animals and organisms. Mm -hmm. It applies to uh, tribes, it applies to countries, it applies to societies, it applies to concepts, it applies to religions. All of them have evolved. That's a pretty so, broad scope of things you've just mentioned. Right? I can, you know, have a hundred episodes just talking about how evolution explains this, how evolution explains I that. I might okay. actually take you up on yeah. that and get but you to talk you know, about evolution. Everything can be explained by evolution, right? Why on a, a Bumble, the dating site, why are women more selective than men? Coming fact, up in the next episode, yes. why on Bumble women are more selective than men? Why explained by the theory of evolution? Yes. Why are, are diamonds so expensive when from the laws of supply and demand they should actually be less than uh, you know uh, sapphires and So rubies. you know what our next two videos are going yeah. to be about? Our next two episodes are going to be about hmm. one bumble and two diamonds. Hmm. So in case you are planning to get engaged hmm. with someone you don't know then make sure that you <laughs> subscribe to the channel and watch out for these videos, <laughs> episodes. Yeah. But you know what? You explained the evolution of the eye and the thought yeah. suddenly occurred to me. Hmm. Why did we stop at the visible range of wavelength, which is hmm. basically like 3000 angstroms? Yes. Why not? Why can't we see the entire spectrum of electromagnetic so see, light? We have done an episode on opportunity cost. Okay. okay. You have to ask yourself this, that everything that evolves, you know, gives you some powers, but also takes away something, ah. right? Everything needs energy, everything needs surface area, mm. everything needs uh, your body to put in effort in creating it and maintaining it, in protecting yeah. it, right? And also, so evolution never, almost never will it evolve something that is useless or at least the ROI needs to be there, <laughs> right? And here ah. you can pretty much see things for humans just this spectrum is good enough to survive yeah right? of and course also i just i just realized after after saying it yeah. out loud that radio waves are actually meter length waves yeah and for a meter length wave to be detected you need that size of a yeah there are other animals who have other senses right yeah birds can sense the magnetism magnetic Field, fields yeah. uh, of earth and use that to go from uh, you know africa to europe uh, and pretty much dogs, in a straight line too yeah. uh, i mean humans can hear just from around 200 hertz to uh, 20000 hertz the hearing mm. dogs can hear much higher right so uh, we have only three colors three primary colors that we understand in our eyes as far as i know praying mantis has seven primary uh, colors they understand so the world must be looking so insanely colorful yeah, to them oh, i'm so i'm missing out on so many colors i have FOMO yes. suddenly but mm. um, yeah i uh, wow this is fascinating but um, i'm really looking forward to the next episode on why women are more selective on bumble than men <laughs>